welcome to my channel if you are new. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some DIY home decor which I haven't done in quite some time and I'm just excited to get crafty and share with you what I've made. We've got some clay pieces, we've got some rugs, we've got a little bit of everything today and I'm really excited because I'm actually collaborating with a YouTuber who I've loved for a very very long time. She's so talented is the amazing Katie Bookser and she is making some DIY IKEA hacks. I can't wait to see what she's done with her video so do go and check it out once you've watched this one. Give it a like, say hello from Hermione and I swear you guys are gonna love her. She makes some incredible DIYs and lots of very minimal style pieces so if you like that definitely go and check her out. So let's just jump into it. Here are the DIYs. So let's start with this looped cane pen pot. You're gonna need some looped cane. Surprise, surprise, this stuff is bloody expensive. It's worth its weight in gold. And you'll also need like an old pot or tub. This came out of the recycling bin, thank you, Body Shop. And you can use the lid, whether it's square or circular, as the base of the pen pot. I'm wrapping my looped cane around it to make sure that I've got the right size and just cutting it down to size. You'll notice I didn't cut much of the height off of it because I was just feeling like I didn't want to cut it too much. Have I told you it's expensive? It's very expensive. Anyway, when you are ready, you can start assembling this piece and I'm using these pegs. I think they're called dolly pegs, dolly pins. They're some kind of clothes pin. You can use a regular one if you want. And I'm just pinning the looped cane together because it likes to ping apart and it's really annoying to work with. This way it's easier to glue down. So when you're ready, you can take one pin off, use some strong glue or some super glue, and then put the pin back on, making sure it's not touching the glue. That might be quite difficult, but bear with me. Make sure it doesn't touch the glue so that it's not gonna get stuck to the cane because then you're gonna be stuck with pins on a piece of cane and not a very attractive DIY to be honest. Anyway, once you're done, leave it to dry and then when it's dry you can pop the base back in, slide it in the bottom. Wow, look at this camera angle, just phenomenal. I've really done a good job here. Um, and then you can use some strong glue once again to glue that into place. I'm so sorry, this was really zoomed in. I was obviously very excited to DIY these projects. I wasn't paying much attention to the camera, but then once again, let it dry and we're gonna take some of this. This is piping and it's used in a lot of furniture making, but you can make it or you can just use a ribbon. It doesn't really matter. I'm just covering the edges so that you can't really see that like rough edge. And then once it's done and it's dry, you should have something looking a little bit like this, the finished pen pot. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Now we're gonna do some clay DIYs. I've got a few of these. So this is air dry clay, really easy to use. You're gonna need a mat to protect your surfaces. And these are the things that I use for my air dry clay. So for the first project, I'm making this wall hanging that you will have just seen. It's so simple and easy to make. Just roll your clay really nice and flat, maybe like three or four millimeters. Here I'm checking it with a ruler all the way around to make sure it's the same size and I'm just using some circle cutters to cut a lot of circles and putting one hole in the top. I kind of regretted not doing two but it worked out fine in the end. Uh, make sure you peel it off with a knife and try not to disfigure it too much when it comes off and then lay it to dry on some parchment paper. I'm gonna make a few different shapes and then I'll arrange it into my wall hanging piece. This is the tiniest and most infuriating rolling pin I've ever used in my entire life. So that's fun. Here's just a little montage of me uh, making some clay shapes. Okay, so I went a little overboard. I made a few too many. It's fine. I can use some in another project later down the line. I left them to dry for 24 hours and when they were dry, I took some very light grit sandpaper, sanded all of the edges and the fronts and backs of all of these pieces. I then arranged them into the shape I like, but don't pay any attention to this because I changed it anyway. But as you can see, 
I'm writing on my parchment paper which colour each piece is going to be when I spray paint it. So I spray painted them in all these different colours, here we go, and then I took some cord, very thick cord mind you, because we want this to be nice and sturdy, I tied a knot in the top and then I threaded all my pieces through. They might look terrible from this angle but that's because this is the back of each piece which I didn't pay much attention to when I was spray painting so never mind that. But you're just going to string your cord all the way through. This is where the extra hole would have been nice but it works fine anyway. It's, it's alright. You win some, you lose some. And then to secure it and to make sure they're all gonna be the same distance apart, I used hot glue on the back and stuck the cord down. And then I just hung it on the wall. Ta-da! A clay wall hanging piece, really simple and easy to make. On to the next clay DIY. As you can see, this one is an incense burner stick holder thing back in with a teeny tiny rolling pin and I'm just creating a rectangular shape here so I'm kind of just eyeing it with my ruler and creating the shape cutting the edges off and then for the fun part I'm taking some silver leaf and making loads of teeny tiny little scraps of it and placing it on top of the wet clay kind of like a terrazzo tile style once I'd added all my tiny little pieces of silver foil, I did one last roll with the rolling pin to make sure they weren't gonna go anywhere. And then before I let it dry, I took some wooden dowels, they all have to be the same size, and I pried my piece of clay off of the mat and I placed it on top of the three wooden dowels to create this kind of curved shape as you can see here now this took a lot of playing with to get it into the right shape but it's okay we've got 24 hours until the clay dries so it's fine once you've done that and you're happy with the shape let it dry wait make sure you poke a hole in it first for the incense let it dry and then you should have something that looks like this and onto the final clay DIY, we're gonna do this little trinket dish. This is so easy. I just decided to make it while I had the gold foil out. So once again, tiny rolling pin. Use a circle cutter or something to trace a circle with. Take that off and flatten the edges, make sure they're nice and smooth. And then put a piece of gold or silver or any kind of foil on top and uh, smooth it out. This is gold leaf, it's really inexpensive. I think I got it from Wish. After smoothing it onto the clay, it made this kind of like aged, crackled, wrinkle effect, which I really, really liked, and this is how it turned out. Now to make it into a dish shape, all I'm doing is placing it on top of a smaller cookie cutter and pressing down to give it an imprint. You can either do this with the gold facing up or facing down to give two different variations, but here's how it turned out when it was dry. Moving on, time for a rug DIY. We haven't done a rug in a while. I'm taking this rug that I found from, how many times can I say the word rug? Taking this piece of fabric that I found in the charity shop and I'm going to stitch some embroidery onto it with some wool. So this is a very simple project but it's very time consuming so you'll want a good Netflix show to put on in the background. All I'm doing is taking three colors of wool, threading them through a thick wool needle and tying them into a knot on the rug and then creating my design. As you can see here, I'm doing a line. I'm using a back stitch to create this design. As you can see here, I put the needle in one stitch behind, come out in front and pull it tight and it creates the stitch. And this is just a nice, easy, simple stitch. Luckily with my rug, the weave was really thick so I counted two lines of the weave in the fabric as one stitch and I was able to keep a nice distance that way. I came back around to make sure each of my lines was going to be two stitches thick and I came back and did the other line and I did this with all of my lines. Gosh, I've said lines so many times as well, but as you can see, this whole design is basically just lines of different colors. Now you can do any kind of pattern that you'd like, maybe a cool abstract pattern, but this was pretty simple. It did take me about four hours to do all of them, but it was nice, it was a, a chilled out project. 
and make sure that when you are finished with each section tie it off at the bottom really tightly and the back stitch underneath actually looks really cool I'd love to do something with this one day but you have to be very careful to make sure that it looks nice and tidy so I don't know maybe one day anyway this next part is optional but if you want to finish off your rug with some tassels I just want to show you recap how to make a tassel really quickly wrap the wool around your hand quite a few times tie a knot through the loops at the top pull it nice and tight tie another piece of wool around about a third of the way from the top of the tassel tie it a few times nice and tightly cut the loops which I'm not doing a very good job of showing and then give it a haircut and you can sew this onto the edges of your rug I decided to leave mine nice and simple but I just wanted to show you that you could do this if you wanted to for a little something else and this is where you'd stitch them on at the back anyway I left mine without and this is how it turned out And onto the last DIY, this hessian canvas print. This is just an abstract leaf that I decided to draw onto a piece of hessian, or paint even, not draw. So I'm just starting with a big scrap of hessian and painting a pink square in the middle. Now if I'd been smart, which I hadn't, I would have measured the frame first and made it fit so that the square was the right size for the frame, but I didn't. I just kind of went for it because I was way too excited to get the paint out, but as you can see here, I'm just freehanding it and trying to stay in the lines and just paint a pink square basically leave it to dry for a few hours you should have something that looks a bit like this and then you can start drawing your design on the top you can use paint and a thin paintbrush but I find it more precise to go in with paint markers I reckon you could do this with a sharpie as well I don't see why not but I had these paint markers lying around and uh, they were unloved so I thought I would use them so here I am just drawing a leafy design I didn't really have any kind of picture to draw this from so I just I don't know eyeballed it and it turned out okay but you could do some kind of abstract face or an interesting abstract print with blobs I don't know I'm not really selling this but you could do anything like that that you wanted i think it goes with the nature of this kind of design and i did go over it two or three times to really thicken up those lines and make it look nice and tidy i left it to dry again and then when it was ready i put it in a frame and here is how it turned out so that's everything for today's video i hope you enjoyed it do go and check out katie's channel tell her i said hello and i sent you and give her video a like she's so talented and she definitely deserves a watch so go and have a look and if you want to see some more diys from me let me know in the comments below i'd love to know what you'd like to see next and with all of that being said thank you so much for watching happy diying and i'll see you next time bye